the easiest way to factor trinomials. Now I know you're going to say, oh, there's all kinds of easy ways to do it on the internet, but mine, I swear, is the best way to do it. I've been teaching for over 23 years. I go in and do supply teaching in, in other teachers' classes. And when I show the kids this, they say, why didn't they show me how to do it that way before? It's so easy. So follow along. You're going to see how simple this is, and you will be a star factor. Why do we factor? To find the zeros of the function, right? You need that for your quadratics. So I made a little poem, I don't know how many years ago. My students loved it, and you can make it, put it to a song if you like. It'll make it easier to remember anything that you sing, right? You sing something, remember the lyrics to words from 10 years ago, I bet. So it's the product of the first and the last, the sum of the one in the middle. Find the two numbers that match the above. Take your time, continue to fiddle. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom, reduce, and then you can stop. The answer is there before your eyes. The X on the bottom, the other on top. Now I'm going to show you how that works. <coughs> when you have a trinomial, AX squared plus BX plus C, this is the first. Okay, this is your first number, will be your A. This is the middle. That makes sense. This is the last number. Okay, so follow along. Product of the first and last. What's product mean? Means you multiply them, right? So I have a product of one times minus three. The sum of the one in the middle, two. Find the two numbers that match the above. Take the time to write this out because sometimes you get fooled. What multiplies to negative three and adds to positive two? So one of the numbers is positive, one of the numbers is negative, and because we sum to a positive number, that means the bigger number has to be positive. Three and minus one. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. Okay, we're using these two numbers now. So I have three and minus one. The first is a one. You can't reduce these, they're done. The x on the bottom, the other on top. x plus three times x minus one. Don't forget your equal sign x plus 3 times x minus 1. Okay, these are what we call simple trinomials because the coefficient of x squared is 1. Let's try one more. Product of the first and the last. Now, I know you're going to say, oh, I only need to look here, but when we do the more complex ones, you want to have this down pat. Sum of 14. Two numbers that multiply to give me negative 32 and add to be 14. Now again, we have a negative product, so one is negative, one is positive, but the bigger one has to be positive because our sum is positive. I'm sure you've guessed this by now, it's 16 and minus two. If you don't know your times tables, it will be difficult for you. Now you use these two numbers again, so I put 16 minus two, first on the bottom is a one, so I have x plus 16, x minus two. That is so easy. Now watch this next one. This is where you're going to love it. Here's one. These next few have a coefficient that is not 1. So now the product, again, is the first and the last. So 6 times minus 12 is minus 72. The sum of the 1 in the middle, 1. I want two numbers that multiply to give me negative 72. The same two numbers add to 1. So again, we have a negative product and a positive sum. So our numbers, you know that 9 and 8 make 72. Which one is negative? Well, obviously the 8. So now I write up my two numbers, 9 and minus 8. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. Where's your first? Right here, 6, right? 6. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. Reduce. So reduce this fraction. They both divide by 3. These both divide by 2. So I've reduced, and now I can stop. The answer is there before your eyes. The x on the bottom, or whatever the variable is that's in it, the other on top. 2x plus 3, 3x minus 4. 2x plus 3, 3x minus 4. Isn't that easy? 
Now I know some of you have done composition, some of you they make these X's and they have all this stuff. You don't need to do that. It's this simple. Look, 6x squared minus 8 plus 3 is plus 9 and minus 12. I'm right. You'll always be right when you do this method. Now this one, 8x squared plus 24x plus 10. Now this time you have to look for a common factor. I threw this one in here just to make sure that you would do that first. So I can take out a two out of all these first. Now the two doesn't disappear, it's still there. Just leave it there. And now I do all my work on the side. Don't put it under here. I'm looking for a product of four times five, product of 20, and a sum of 12. What two numbers multiply to give me 20, but add to give me 12? Now the product is positive, so they both have to be positive. What makes 20? Well, how about 2 times 10? And 2 plus 10 is 12. Okay, so I put 2 and 10, 2 and 10. These are my magic numbers. Forget about these things now. You've got 2 and you've got 10. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom. The first is here. Now this 2 is still going to be in my solution, but it's already been factored out. 2 over 4, 10 over 4. 2 over 4 is 1 over 2. 10 over 4 is 5 over 2. So the x on the bottom, the other on top, 2x plus 1, 2x plus 5, you're done. 2x plus 1, 2x plus 5. Now the last one I'm going to show you is one where you have, this is one where people get confused because it's got x's and y's in it. Don't worry about the y's, okay? If there's a y here and a y squared here, an x squared and an x here, we're just going to handle those numbers, those variables at the end of this. Okay, so I'm looking for a product of the first and the last, minus 60, the sum of the one in the middle. Sum is 7. Now, if you get stuck on these, you can start working through factors of 60 so that you can figure out how am I going to get to 70. You know, well, you've got 6 times 10. Well, that's not going to make 7. Um, what else multiplies to 60? Well, divide it out. 60 divided, divide by primes, so 2 into 60 is 30, uh, 2 into 30 is 15, and then I would have 3 and 5. So with these numbers here and multiplying them together whatever way, you can see if I could say 4 and 15, no, it's not going to make 9. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12 and 5. Yes, I can make 7. Why did I say 9? It's a 7. 12 and 7. So product, I want 12 and times, what did I say, 12 times 5, 12 times 5 gives me 60, 12 times plus 5 has to be 7. Now again, it was minus 60, so I need it to be 1 is negative, 1 is positive. Obviously, the 5 is going to be negative, or else we wouldn't have a positive sum. So now all I have to do is write those two numbers, 12 minus 5. Make two fractions with the first on the bottom, reduce, and then you can stop. The answer is there before your eyes. The x on the bottom, the other on top. Now this time the other is a y. So I have x and I have an x here and this. You might want to put a little box over it once you've figured it out. So that gives me x plus 6y times 2x minus 5y. 2x minus 5y. And you can see when I expand that, I get my xy term here. I still have 2x squared. I still have minus 31 squ 30 squared. And I get my 7xy. That's as easy as it could possibly be. The little fraction method. And if you want, you should take the time to memorize this little poem. I know it sounds silly, but silly helps. Hope this really helps you to be great factors because you're going to use it a lot. Bye.